Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be reviewing the OEX Bobcat One Man Tent. The OEX Bobcat One Man Tent is designed and developed in the UK and then it's produced and made in China. And it's brought back over and we sell it. You can buy this in places such as Millets, Go Outdoors and Blacks. At the moment it's retailing at around £100 but you can usually get that on a sale for around about 80 quid. It's a pretty cheap tent. It's an olive green colour. One man which means it's a quick to erect. The tent is 5000 hydrostatic head. Now you'll find there's not many tents out there that is higher than that. So for the British weather, you're done. That's all you need. You, you don't need nothing more than 5,000 hydrostatic head in Britain. We don't get that much bad weather. So this is absolutely ideal. I would say personally, four season, 100% four season. As long as you're not up somewhere like Helvellyn and it's six foot of snow, you'll be all right. What you'll find is, with the OEX brand, within the tents, the bag always comes with these side pouches here. And what happens is, these can clip onto your rucksack. You go through the hole, and that can clip on to your rucksack to make it secure. It also comes with a clip at the top, so you can reduce the size of the bag by pushing it down, the air comes out, and then it's a tie bag, so you just clip it back together. Very easy. There's not many tent brands that have this. And to be honest, when you've got a two-man tent, you can share the weight, half it. With this just being a one-man tent, you can't do that. But it's light enough anyway. Like I said, 1.9 kilograms. It's nothing. It's only 1.9 kilograms. And I've got some more specifics here. <clears throat> the pack size, as we can see here, is 41 centimetres by 14 by 14. But that can be massively altered. And I'll show you at the end of the video when I roll the tent back up. The outer, when it's pitched, is 80 centimetres. The vestibule is 60 centimetres. The length is 220 centimetres. And the height is 110. The inner bit is 70 by 200. And the height is 100. So it does sound like it's got a pretty good space. I've never put this tent up before, it's my first time. This is my friend's tent, it's Aaron's tent. And I'm really looking forward to get it pitched up. If it's one thing which I love about some of the OEX tents, and that is, <clears throat> some of them are outer pitch first. This is outer pitch first. So if it's lashing down, Get your poles in, you've got your shelter, that's it. Then you can just stay in there until it dies down, or you can just whack everything up while it's lashing down. But you won't get wet, because your shelter of the tent will already be up. Let's get the tent whacked up, and I'll show you what it's like. The contents in the bag are as follows. You have instructions of how to put the tent up, both sides. Very clear instruction, so you can't really go wrong. 10 pegs, poles, and the tent itself.
Right, everyone, put your tent up. Now, with it being inner pitched first, uh, outer pitched first, you can keep the inner bit in, which I've done. So all you need to do is, roll your tent out like that. That's where you want to be starting. Get your tent pole, pole with this, because there's only one. Get that all whacked out. A lot of the time they do connect themselves because of the wire is quite tight inside. Oop. Locate your pole where it's going to go. Shove that through. Straight through there. Connected to the Eyelet there. Push as hard as you can. Locate the other side where the pole's going to connect into. Slot that in. It's very easy on this tent. Get your poles. Now I do recommend that you locate the back of the tent, which would be this side. Put these in first because the back is going to be quite tight. So put these ones in first. Make sure you stretch it out properly. It is quite a robust tent, so don't be shy. That's nice and tight there. Lift it up. Pull the front out. Make sure that the poles are fully pulled towards you. Get that whacked in. You'll see here what I mean. Once you pull that, you can see that pole moving there. That's nice and tight. Get this whacked in. And that's your tent up. That's it. That's for starters. And then you would work around your tent, doing all the guy ropes, make sure it's nice and tight. Now, when you're putting the, in, the inner in, it'll come with four hooks at each of the corners. Hook at each of the corner to the sides of the tent. So you've got two here, and you've got two on this side. Hook these in. Now that's your inner tent secure. Then what you do is, on the end of the inner tent, you'll see these holes in the tent with these little plastic sockets and that's going to go into the hole to keep up your inner tent. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six to put in. That's all you've got. Then you'll soon see your inner tent become your living quarters. So we'll get all these whacked in. And that's it, it's up and it's ready to go. Once the inner bit's in, your tent's almost up. You need to pull in the vestibule, you've got this bottom base, which you would pull out and you would peg out. Once you've done that, you can then, if you wanted to, get the zip, pull it all the way around Make sure that doesn't snag onto the velcro because if it does, it's quite hard to get it off. Once you've put that all the way around, you've got a little pocket on the side of the tent. That's it, you sorted. Your tent's up, you can get everything in. Right, everyone, here's the tent up.
I'm not going to lie, it looks amazing. I haven't put the guy ropes out, didn't see the point, but look at that. Looks cool as out. Right, so getting in the tent, let's have a look. This vestibule bit here is ideal to have this, um, the outer bit for the floor that you can, you can sit on there, you can put your clothes, you can do all sorts with it. It's just practical. It's a really good idea. You know, like most most vestibules, they just have nothing there and it's just the grass. But I mean, if your grass is wet or if it's been raining, or muddy even, uh, this is ideal. It's just there. It's a mat to sit on. So your tent's gonna, it's not gonna get me in. Right, let's have a look. We're in. So unlike the fox ones, which is quite low profile, at least this way, you'd be able to just easily get in. Then you're down, that's it. Easy access. You've got the option if you wanted just to have this all the way down, if you were just chilling, then you've got all this space here. If it was raining, and if you had a little bit of common sense, you would point this, open the, the door away from the wind. So the wind and rain will be hitting the back of the tent. Then at least that way, you could actually sit upright like this. And the rain and wind would be blown that way so you wouldn't even get wet. Another good thing. So inside you've got a storage pocket there. You've got more than enough space here to get yourself in with your sleeping mat. You've got another storage pocket there. You've got a lantern spot here to put your little light on. Just ideal. This, on the outer bit here, so the door can either go in this pocket here I'll put it in that pocket there. As you can see here, the door actually, the zips can go either way. So they go all the way around. They go all the way around and then you would zip it off at the bottom, as so, and then put it in the storage pocket here. So that's a pretty smart idea as well. Right, we'll zip this up. See how easy this is? So one hand, one's holding my phone. Absolute no effort at all. It's great. Right, my head's right at the back now. Remember, I'm just near six foot tall. My feet are at the bottom there. I can probably move further up, but now my head's touching this pocket here at the back. So again, I think if you any, definitely, if you're six, six foot max, this is on us quite a bit here. So you gotta think, once you're on your sleeping bag, this is definitely gonna be touching you. So I, personally, I would find that quite annoying. Yeah, the width wise is perfect. I've got more than enough room. I am fairly broad. You've got a good air vent here, but I think you've got a little one on the outside here, but we'll have a look at that. Well, yeah, so far it's pretty nice. 5,000 hydrostatic head, like we said, so you're gonna stay dry. It's just this bit here, which is really close. But it, I don't think, it would bother us, but I could get away with it. If you slept on your side like this, so your head's facing that way, it's not touching you. Right, so let's go around and have a look at some of the features of the tent. So we'll start from the front. 
what's ideal is it's come with these little holes here. Now what you can do with this is you can undo the zips, bring this up, and you can have two little tent poles. You could even use hiking poles to put this up. So you've got a nice porch area. You will have to move this, but you could easily have this in the air to have a lovely porch area which you could sit in and chillax. As you can see there, it's 5,000 hydrostatic head. It's got its lovely Bobcat one on the side there with the OEX logo. Now you can clearly see here all around, it's extremely tight. You can even make it tighter by pulling this and that would bring this further down. But at the minute that seems pretty secure as it is. It's got plenty of pegs, things to put this down to make it secure. Now what I've done here is, as you can see, I've put three pegs in there. Now that means, I haven't put one in the end, so that means I could, I could get in the door that side just one way and that would make it more robust against winds and the wind and, wind and rain, stuff like that. It means nothing would be really flapping about, you would get in zip that straight down then you're in that sorted the velcro is really stiff so nothing's getting through there into the zips it's got the o-rings for the guy rope so if you want to loosen it just pull this down that'll loosen it if you want to strengthen it pull that up tighten it up or down it's very easy what I also love about the tent is the material where you thread the poles through. This is superb because it doesn't nag on the side. It won't get stuck. So you can easily push it straight through. It's got some tie ropes here for the guy ropes to pull off there to make it more, more secure. It's also got one on the other side. Come around the other side, you've got another logo there. Where you put the poles in it was extremely easy to put them in there was no resistance there at all unlike some of the oex tents it can be quite hard to put the poles in you can clearly see there that it's got st like strengthened material so that doesn't rip so you can put a lot of pressure on that going on to the back bit it does look smart from the back and it's got a good drop so any rain or snow is going to hit that and go all the way down very quickly and if you put some extra stuff on the tent like fabsil or something like that you're going to make it that extra waterproof so anything that's going to hit it it's just going to roll straight off it's got an extra guy rope here to bring this out so like i said inside that's going to be quite on your skin possibly if you pull that a little bit it might take it a bit off you getting the back bit nice in here it's going to be nice and tight once that's pushed right to the ground this is going to be on the floor now they reckon that if your tent goes all the way to the floor it could be a four season tent so personally i think this is a four season tent it's really nice but that's the features of the tent, that's what you're going to get. If you look at some other tents, you'll find that it won't have little features like this where you can make it extra tight. The only thing I think, personally, which I think they could have done, was maybe he's put an air vent on this side, even here. So you've got that extra bit of airflow going in on this side, then you would have the flap to make that waterproof. But, you've got quite a big one on the other side, so that might make it alright. But putting that tent up, I'm very happy with that. It looks superb. It's got loads of features, which just makes that one-man tent that extra bit comfortable. It is getting in, getting out. You can sit at the front. It's just nice. 
So now I'm gonna just show you how easy it is. So just imagine it's lashing down, it's raining, you just wanna get into your tent quickly. Well, I've left one side open, up, in. That's it, we're in. Like I said, there's plenty of room in here, as you can see my hand there popping out. I can get straight to my tent here. I can possibly even get changed. So I've got enough room here, inside, to get changed. Get straight into my sleeping bag. Ideal, practical, and affordable. We're gonna put the tent away now. But I'm not going to speed it up, and I'm not going to edit it in any way. Uh, this is just to show you how quick as well you can put the tent away. Now with it being out of pitch first, you can leave everything in on the inside, which I'm going to do. So then you've literally just got to take all the pegs out, take the main pole out, roll it up, put it in your bag, done, that's it, you're away. I'm going to guess, without editing it, I'm going to say... I'm going to go 3 minutes 30 seconds, let's have a look. That is quite tight when it's all up like. Maybe just take all the pegs out before you even think about moving this back down. Yeah, it's out now. That was really easy to take out. So take all the pegs out. Always push it out one side first. Then it should just pull straight out. There we go. That's the pole out. Take out the vestibule area. Tuck that in. I always recommend leaving one peg in. Tighten that up. Roll it up. I've left them ones in. Roll it over. Get it to what you think it should be. Leave one peg in, like I said. So you can pull it towards you. Tighten it, roll it up. Nice and tight. Always keep it taut towards you. Squash it right down, done. That's it, tent, bag, away. Now this is what I meant about it, at the end I was going to show you something. So it's all in the bag now, just the tent, I've got the poles here separate. Now what I would do is personally, I'll get the, these pegs, chuck them. They are really good pegs, but I've got some, they're like X pegs at the top, the X. And they're unbelievably light, hell of a lot lighter than them. And you get, to be fair, I reckon you get too many pegs in that. It is quite heavy. Now, with the stuff sack, get this whacked down, compress it. You hear the air coming out. You can see how far this is going down. Get it whacked in. Yeah, it's absolutely tiny. Now, with this, you've still got these side pockets that can strap into your bag. It's just made a hell of a lot smaller. Your poles can just slot into your bag. There we go, it's tiny. Absolute titch. So that's just an idea for you. If you ever get a Bobcat 1, you could do that with it. I mean, that can probably even go further down. You could, you know, get that really small if you're sat in it or something. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great shout with that. But yeah, they, these pegs are class because they are really thick. 
you know, and they're not going to bend. But the pegs which I've seen, which I've got, the X pegs at the top, they are they're unbelievably light. And I think I've got about, you get about 10 in a pack, and that's all you're going to need for something like this. Unless you're in the top of the mountains where it's going to be really windy, then I would, pro I would probably take them ones. But if I'm just going to somewhere where it's not going to be that windy, and I know the weather's going to be all right, X pegs. Well, I hope you've liked the video. I hope this has gave you a bit of an insight of the Bobcat one and what you expect to get with it. If you liked the video, please like the button, the bottom, the little thumbs up like that. Watch some more videos at the side there. Subscribe in the middle. And watch some more videos. We'll see you later on.